here we're going to construct the adjunction that comes from the Claisley category. Now, what did I mean when I said that? We started with a monad T on a category C, and we've constructed the Claisley category for T, and I'm now going to show you that there's an adjunction that gives rise to the original monad that we started with. So we've got the Claisley category CT, and we've got the original category C, and what we're going to construct is a monad like uh, an adjunction like this which I'll call F lower T and G lower T, that gives rise to T. What does it mean to give rise to T? It means that G T F T equals T, and that the unit and the, the, the unit and co-unit give rise to the right unit and multiplication. Uh, and remember that before we had some junction giving rise to T that came from the eilenberg mohr category. So how are we going to construct this? Remember that CT has the same object to C, but it has slightly funny morphisms, and that secretly you're thinking that it's the free algebras that came from this construction. So in order to get the funk to go in this direction, what we want to do is think we're going to send it to the free algebra. But remember what I said last time, an object of this is really to be thought of as the free algebra on it. So on object, this funk is going to set, take A and just send it to, to A. Um, it's the, what's going to be, be different is what happens to the morphisms. So on morphisms, we're going to take the morphism A to B. Now, where does it have to go? It has to go to a morphism A to B in the Claisley category, which, remember, is actually a morphism from A to TB. So how could we possibly get a morphism from A to TB out of there? Well, our only hope is to hit the entire morphism with T, and then stick an eater on at the beginning. So that's how you get that functor. In the opposite direction, uh, what we want to think secretly is we take a free algebra here and we send it to its underlying object, forgetting that it was an algebra. Now remember that A is really the free algebra on A. We're supposed to be secretly thinking it's the free algebra on A. In which case, when we take the underlying object of it, what's the underlying object of the free algebra? The free algebra is that, remember? So the underlying object is TA. So on object, A is going to go to TA. And what about on morphisms? Well, a morphism here from A to B is really a morphism from A to TB. And so this has to go from this has to go from TA to TB over here because this was really a morphism from A to B. So how can we possibly do that? What hope have we got? Well, our only hope, again, is to hit it with T. We have very few tricks in this game. We just keep using them over and over again. So this goes from TA to T squared B, and then we use mu afterwards to get back down to TB. So that's a perfectly good functor. This is a perfectly good functor, if you check with their functorial. And then it remains to show the unit and the co-unit. Well, probably you can see what's going on here. This is... I didn't mean unit. Did I mean unit and co-unit? Yeah, I did. Well, here's the eta and here's a mu. Uh, now, where shall I put this? Where shall I put this? Where shall I put this? Um, I think I'll put it up here. So the unit, the unit has to go from uh, A to uh, G F of A. Okay, so what's g f of a? Well, f of a is just a, and g of a is t of a. This is into a, so we've got to go from a to t a. Oh, it's just going to be the unit for the monad is uh, eta. I've got that notational thing again. What about the co-unit? The co-unit has to go from f g a to a. Well, what's f g a? g a is over here. It's TA, and then when we forget again, we just don't get anything whatsoever. Okay. TA, and this is A, and you might think, uh-oh, what's going on? Except, of course, this has to be a morphism in the Claisley category, this co-unit, uh, eta A, is a morphism in the Claisley category. So what we actually need is a morphism from TA to A in the Claisley category which is just a morphism from TA to TA in the actual category. Well, that's not very difficult. That's going to be the identity on TA. So 
then you can check the unit and co-unit are uh, mm, uh, satisfy the triangle identities. And you might think, well, what's going on? There's an eta here and an identity here. But it's all going to come out in the wash just about. Because remember, when we compose morphisms in the Kleisley category, you do all sorts of funny things to them. And you use mu's, you stick mu's on all over the place. So it's all going to come down to the axioms for a monad involving eta and mu. And I just don't think I'm going to do it on the blackboard right now. Because I want to say a little bit more about the, how the Kleisley category and the ironberg more category interact. So the point is that given the monad T on C, there's a whole category of adjunctions giving rise to it. So here's one possible adjunction giving rise to it. And here's another possible adjunction giving rise to it. Right? And what's a morphism in this category going to be? Well, you guessed it. It's going to be a morphism up here, that is a functor up there, making the left adjoint parts of this triangle commute and making the right adjoint parts of this triangle commute. And in this category of adjunctions, so this is a yet a category uh, you can call it add T, um, which means the category of adjunctions giving rise to T, we have an initial object which is the Kleisley category. And we have a terminal object, which is the eilenberg moore category. And so what we've got is a situation where over here, we've got this adjunction we just constructed. And over here, we've got the terminal one, which we constructed before. So this is um, F lower T, G lower T. This is F upper T and G upper T. And then you can say, given any other adjunction, here's some random adjunction that also gives rise to it, there's a unique map here, induced by the fact that this is the initial object, and there's a unique map here, map of adjunctions, induced by that fact, that the fact that that's a terminal object. So you've got this sort of tug of war going on where you fix these ends and you know exactly you know exactly where this is by looking at these morphisms. And the interesting questions that you might want to ask yourself are, when is this category actually the same as the initial object, and when is it actually the same as the terminal object? And that is a question I mentioned earlier, which is the question of monodicity. So you look at this, this comparison map that compares this to the category of algebras, and you say to yourself, how, how close is my category D to being actually the same as or equivalent to this category of algebras? So the question is, question, given an adjunction, F left adjoint to G um, is D equivalent to the category of algebras for the monad. And that's what monadicity is. So um, there are several ways of saying this. You can say that the category D is monadic over C, if this is true, which means you can express everything in it as an algebra for the monad. Or you can say that um, this adjunction is a monadic adjunction, which means that when you take the category of algebras, you just sort of basically get the same adjunction that you started with. And another way of saying it is you look at this forgetful functor, um, the, the right adjoint, and you say that G is monadic if this situation holds. And one way of thinking about it is that monadic adjunctions are particularly good kinds of adjunctions. They're very canonical. You know, this is a particularly canonical form of adjunction, and that's a particularly canonical form of adjunction. And so asking for an adjunction to be monadic is abstractly asking for it to be particularly canonical. In practice, what it's asking for is for D to be really like a category of algebras. Why do we like this? Well, there are lots of reasons we like this. Categories of algebras are particularly well behaved. Perhaps we'll talk about this another time. They have very good features. You can get hold of all your algebras. Ah! You can get hold of all your algebras in particular ways. I can't possibly say anything coherent in the last 25 seconds after that. But categories of algebras, it's easy to construct um, it's easy to construct certain things in them. It's easy to construct, oh no, I can't remember whether it's limits or co-limits. It's got to be limits. It's got to be limits. Um, and before I say anything else that's wrong, I'll stop.